Hi there, repair time again and today on the bench is a power supply for a large mixing desk. The power is delivered using this multi-core cable. The mixing desk in question is the Eurodesk MX9000 and this here is just a separate 400 watt power supply. According to the label we should see plus and minus 17 volts, each at 3.5 amps. I assume the mixer will regulate these internally further down to plus minus 15 volts. Then we have plus 48 volts, which is probably for the microphone inputs needing a phantom supply. And finally 12 volts at 1.5 amps and 5 volts at 3 amps. The fault description is that the power supply is not working right. The front of the unit has just a power switch, nothing else. The back has the IEC power inlet with an integrated fuse and a grommet through which the multi-core output cable emerges. There are a lot of screws that hold the lid. Inside a single PCB, the transformer and lots of empty space. There's a small fan on the rear of the left side. As it's quite obvious from the PCB layout, this is essentially five separate linear power supplies, which makes sense since this is driving sensitive audio kit where the electrical noise of a switch mode power supply is unwanted. Each power rail gets its own AC input from a dedicated transformer winding going through a bridge rectifier made of four discrete diodes, followed by a big smoothing cap and then a regulator. The regulators are all mounted isolated on a common aluminium bracket which in turn is screwed onto the heat sink at the rear of the enclosure. On power on, the fan springs to life but no smoke or explosions. Time to check voltages. I managed to find a schematic which wasn't easy and this includes the pinout of the connector. It seems not quite right as this diagram shows plus minus 18 volts on pins E and F while the unit says plus minus 17 volts. Well okay, what's a volt more or less under friends? More worrying is that pin B is also labeled as plus 18 volts but should really be the plus 12 volt output, not the greatest attention to detail. More confusingly, this power supply uses two grounds. The plus 12V and 5V are apparently for driving the logic in the mixing desk and use pin C as the digital ground. The plus minus 18 and the plus 48V are using mains earth. And there's a big problem there, but at the time I did not notice. Okay, so with a black lead in the digital ground, pin A has 5V as it should. With a black lead connected to earth, Pin F has minus 17 volts, fine, and using the same earth, pin E has the needed plus 17 volts, and pin D has the 48 volts, all as it should be. The wrong label on the diagram confused me initially, but against the digital ground, pin B has the plus 12 volts, and that's okay. Now I'm wondering if all voltages are present, what's the problem? I put a load resistor on the plus 17 volts. The blue meter shows the voltage and the yellow the current in amps. Ah, with just 0.44 amp load, the voltage collapsed to about 13 volts. That's no good. It should handle 3.5 amps and when I remove the load, the voltage jumps back up to 17 volts. But with just one tenth of its max load, the voltage is just 13 volts. What about the negative 17 volts? Repeating the test shows it handles 0.5 amps just fine. And increasing the load to almost 2.5 amps is no problem. This voltage rail is okay. I also tested the 5 volts with 2 amp load and it was fine. And 12 volts had no problems with 1.3 amps. I also tested 48 volts but I have no video of it. All except the plus 17 volts could handle load. A closer inspection of the plus 17 volts section of the PCB reveals a very suspicious capacitor that appears to have spilled its guts. The bad cap is very obvious if you compare it with the identical circuit for the minus 17 volts on the right. At the very least, that blown cap has to be replaced and for that the PCB has to be out. Luckily, only the fan wires are actually soldered in. And with all the transformer taps disconnected, it is obvious that the transformer mounting itself needs tightening too. I put it on the list of things to fix. All the outputs of the multicore cable are unplugged, but it still remains to desolder the fan wires. Clearly it could have made this pluggable too, but they choose to save a few pennies. 
A kinder thought is that they wanted to make sure nobody runs the unit with the fan unplugged. With the fan wires removed, the PCB is now disconnected. Now the earth wire connection and the three screws holding the bracket with the regulators need to be removed. And the five screws holding the front of the PCB on standoffs from the chassis. Now the PCB can be removed from underneath the wiring. To improve the heat transfer, the bracket and the heatsink use thermal compound. For now I remove the old residue because I will replace it with fresh compound at reinstall. Wow, this 100 microfarad 35 volt cap has really exploded. Must have been quite a bang. It left traces along the side of the big cap next to it. This is not the usual capacitor leak where the electrolyte makes a mess on the PCB underneath the capacitor. This looks more like an over voltage or reverse polarity incident. And the inside of the lid actually shows where the ejected guts finally landed. Some isopropanol removes the gunk on the lid and I also cleaned the side of the big cap. I wonder what the ESR tester says about this cap. Okay, it's so bad it can't even measure it. The same cap on the minus 17 volts test OK and all the other caps tested OK too. I replaced the bad cap with a new one and fed 28 volts DC for my bench power supply into the full bridge rectifier on the plus 17 volts rail. This simulates a 20 volts AC input from the transformer. The unloaded output is nearly 18 volts. Loaded with 20 ohms, that's about 0.9 amps, it drops only slightly. And with 10 ohms or about 1.8 amps, it's the same. It's working just fine now. I am curious about the bad capacitor. And now that it's out, I test it with 30 volts while measuring the current. It has a leaking current of just 0.7 microamps, so it's by no means a short circuit. The component tester says it has a capacitance of just 477 picofarad left. A big drop from 100 microfarads, but it's still a capacitor, so why did the circuit fail? The failed capacitor was C17, hanging at the output of the regulator LM350. As you can see, the plus and minus 17 volts circuits are identical. The only difference is that for the plus 70 volts the negative pole is connected to earth and for the minus 17 volts it's the positive pole. Because the circuits are the same, I replaced C18 in the minus 17 volt section as well. It's the same 100 microfarad 35 volt type, even though it has not failed yet. Here you can see both new caps installed. Just to finish the overview of the schematic, the 48 volts uses an LM317 and is of course designed for much less current delivery. The 5V circuit uses again an LM350 as a regulator, while the 12V uses a good old 7812 for this purpose. The application notes of the LM350 contains this interesting passage. Remember that the failed 100 microfarad capacitor at the output has shrunk to just 477 picofarad? That's right at the lower end of the range of the output capacitance that will cause excessive ringing in an LM350. Probably this is what caused the apparent drop in voltage under load. I suspect if I had used an oscilloscope instead of a multimeter, I would have seen oscillations, while the multimeter of course showed only the RMS value. And while we are on the subject of data sheets, while the LM350 is typically able to do 4.5 amps, it is actually only guaranteed to do up to 3 amps. So the 3.5 amps shown on the label of this power supply for the plus minus 17 volts rails are actually a touch optimistic. Time to put this back together, starting with applying fresh heatsink compound, which with this long bracket is actually quite a lot. And since the screws kept the red sealant attached to their heads, my reinstall looks as if this is still a unit from the factory. To make it less likely that the transformer gets loose again, I wanted to use a spring washer, but I did not have one of the right size. But this tooth washer will give at least some improvement. At least for now, that transformer is no longer moving. Now powered from the transformer again, time to check voltages. First. The ones for the analog part that have to be measured against earth. Plus 17 and a bit volts are present. 
so is the minus 17 volts and the 48 volts. Now for the voltages for the digital part that have their own ground. 5 volts is alive and present and so is 12 volts. I connected load resistors to all power rails only for the 12 volts I had a suitable one for the full 1.5 amps. The rests are loaded somewhere less but still substantially. Plus 17 volts is ok. Minus 70 volts also ok. 48 volts is fine. Fully loaded 12 volts is still there. And so is 5 volts. While loaded a quick check with a thermal imaging camera and all is as expected. Only the 12 volt rectifier and regulator are getting a bit toasty, but that's expected at full load of 1.5 amps. After all, the 7812 regulator is really meant for 1 amp. So everything is fine, close up and return to the user, right? Well, that's when it occurred to me, how is this thing actually used? The voltages for the analog part of plus minus 17 volts and 48 volts are earth referenced and I could not find earth in the plug of the multicore cable. Not to worry, I somehow thought, the mixing desk has its own earth connection. But how would that even be realized since its power supply and thus the connection to earth is the unit I just repaired. I scrutinized the schematics of the mixing desk. This here is its internal power distribution. At the bottom is the input from the connector of our multicore cable. First observation is that they tie analog ground, that is earth, and digital ground together. And that's interesting, but it does not help here because in the power supply the voltages for digital and analog are truly fully isolated from each other. I also notice when plugging the multicore wires back on the power supply PCB that a brown wire in the multicore cable is actually connected to earth. Conclusion, the earth wire in the multicore cable plug is no longer connected. This fault could also explain the blown capacitor if the missing earth made the mixing desk floating to some high voltage against earth that killed the cap. Makes you wonder if these two caps are still ok. In search for the missing earth connection I removed the back shell of the connector and then cut away the heat shrink. But it's really tight in there and the only pin that's a candidate for earth is right in the middle surrounded by all other wires. I connected one lead of a multimeter on continuity to the earth of the mains cable and poked with a sharp probe between the other wires to where the earth wire should be and indeed it's there just no longer connected to the middle pin. I removed the heat shrink of the yellow and blue wires in the hope if I desolder them I could reach into the middle to maybe reconnect the earth wire but it's impossible. Also the solder and wire strands of the other wires were really in bad condition. So I did a radical fix. Desolder them all and cut them off and make a brand new termination of all wires. Sorry, this job was so cramped and fiddly that videoing at the same time was not possible. Anyway, here's the final pinout of the connector with the earth added. The colors are the wire colors in the multicore cable. I used that diagram to solder the wires back in. A quick test to see if it all still works, as it should. First, the voltages for the analog part using the newly attached earth wire on the center pin. Minus 17 volts is fine. Plus 70 volts is ok. And so is plus 48 volts. And now the other two voltages using the digital ground. Plus 12 volts is there. And so is plus 5 volts. And now at last the repair is hopefully done. At least as far as the power supply side is concerned. Not much to show for. Two replaced caps, of which one is just precautionary. And the cable is now 3 cm shorter. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.